Welcome to the George Mason Basketball Coaches Show with Tony Skin. I'm your host, Bill Rowland. We've got a special program for you tonight. Our special guest is women's basketball coach, Vanessa Blair-Lewis. We're going to talk about their matchup for first place coming up on Thursday. Coach, we're going to get right into it and talk about not only your game coming up against Loyola on Wednesday, nice to get back home at Eagle Bank Arena, obviously, but let's take a look at a couple of heartbreaking losses that you guys had last Wednesday in St. Joe's. You have a shot near the end of the game that could have taken the lead. Fortunately, it didn't go that well. But you guys, again, 40 minutes from start to finish, fought the entire way on the road. Yeah, it's been, you know, it's been, um, it's been rough. You know, that's what conference play does for you. Um, you know, it's a game of separation. And obviously, you look at some of our losses on the road, um, I think there's a, there's a separation of five points between three games dating back to VCU. Um, going to St. Joe's where we lost by two, and then obviously going to UMass where we lost by one. Um, it's tough, you know, and that's what, um, that's what road life does do for you. We're four and five right now. We have a chance to come back home um, and to show some resilience, obviously, against, you know, what I think is one of the better teams against uh, with uh, Loyola Chicago. But it happens, and, you know, you win one or two of those games, and you're sitting right at the top of the league, and we've just got to be able to be better in, 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 in tougher moments, especially on the road moving forward. You guys sit at four and five in league play right now. And again, as you mentioned, so many close games, especially on the road. Yeah. But when you look at the opportunities that your team had, I imagine, again, no moral victories. I understand yeah. that as far as coach speak goes. But you have to look at, at the product, productivity that you've gotten from some of the guys on the road. Darius Maddox has been playing much better. Yeah. You know, everybody was talking about, you and I joked about it, that some of the fans are like, what's wrong with Darius? What's wrong with Darius? Nothing's wrong with Darius. He's yeah. back to being his old self again. Yeah, no, it's 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 tough. And and again, I, I've preached it all year. I talk about our depth. You know, that's also hurt us lately. Um, you know, we were without Trey, we were without uh, Malik, who's you know a high energy guy for us. And it's hard to win on the road when you're just playing with one five man who ends up getting in foul trouble, and then you're just trying to figure out a way to come out with the win. And I mean, a UMass team that I think is as physical and as athletic as anybody else in the country. And for us, I'm sorry, in our league, and for us to still be in that game, um, I think we were up five with, you know, three or four minutes to go. You know, we've just got to be better. Yeah, well, okay, let's go ahead and, and, and pivot to UMass. Then you guys were up, you mentioned it, 55 to 50 late in that ball game. They go on an 11 to 1 run, and it's real easy in that type of environment to just pack it in and say, well, we played well for 35, 36 minutes, not going to be our night or afternoon, and then move on. But you guys, still down six, came up with a three-point play from Keyshawn Hall. Late in the game, you got an and one, made the free throw. You go down, you get a stop. They miss a free throw. All of a sudden, you're right back in it there with 17 seconds to go when you take your last time out. Yeah, you know, I, and, and I, I'm still growing in this. And um, I, I, I prematurely called a timeout early in that game, and I just knew it was going to come back to bite me. Um, but with that said, we still had an opportunity to um, win that game. I mean, that was a, a hell of a play by Ronnie Polite, just diving on the floor for that, um, for that ball coming up with it and Baraka scoring it. And, you know, unfortunately, those things happen. But I would say, you know, as much as the, the world saw that last possession and, you know, obviously Keyshawn um, darting out and fouling, it, it came down to – it didn't have to come down to that possession. There were definitely, um, you know, some moments where we could have took the lead and stretched that to five and – you know, we fouled a couple times down the stretch when we shouldn't have fouled. And, you know, again, you talk about poise. Um, we've got to do better on the road. And, again, when you're putting together a new team, a bunch of different guys that have never really been in those moments, sometimes they don't know what to do. Um, and hopefully these games are teaching them what to do the next time we're in that situation. Yeah, on that last play, you call the timeout. You guys are down by two. Call the play. Woody Newton takes the three, rebound gets knocked around, it's out near midcourt. One of their guys goes to scoop it up. He didn't dive on the ground, he just reached down for it. And Ronnie, as you referenced, just lunged out, yeah. lying on the That's floor, a game play. grabbed the ball, got it to a Koji, he goes in for the layup. And we got to talk about it. Yeah. The, the moment when Keyshawn makes that foul, was there a thought that he maybe thought you guys were down three because Woody had taken a three? Was there something that he heard from the bench? What do you think? happen or is it just one of those things that unfortunately in that moment yeah I think it was just one of those things um, I think he was trying to do the right thing sometimes when you make a play it can trick you into some thinking something different and obviously it was a two-point game but the better shot that we got was from three and so I could see where he probably thought we were down three and we get a layup 
Um, and, and just from a mental standpoint, he just had a, you know, a mini breakdown of thinking that he needed to foul. Uh, right play, wrong moment. I, I think two things from that will help this team going forward down the road, especially on road games. One, Keyshawn took responsibility for it, went on social media, yeah. kind of apologized to the fans and everything, said, hey, my mistake. And two, you also kind of took responsibility away from him, talking about, hey, I had a timeout that I could have saved. Yep. We score that. We, we're calling timeout. There's no way that anybody's going to foul because would have been told in the huddle. I think that type of accountability, not only from Keyshawn, but from yourself, I think goes a long way, not only with the fan base, but probably with the team as well, where people aren't pointing fingers at each other at this point. Everybody's kind of accepting the responsibility that they have. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I'll, I'll always be the first one to fall on the sword for my guys. I mean, they compete. They do the right thing. They're coachable. Um, you know, Keyshawn carries us. <laughs> extremely a lot and so in that situation you know it could have been anybody um, but like I said I'm still learning these guys are learning and you know I think it hurts enough to where guys are watching film and just watching some of the things that they can fix so that again when we're put in that position um, we just handle it better. Yeah it was a tough spot because again Keyshawn team high 25 in that game he, he played really really well I mean you got a contributions from a lot of guys again being shorthanded mm -hmm. we talked about you know Mari fouling out and, and not having Malik against a team who's one of the best rebounding teams and you take him right down to the wire yeah, it's, it's hard it's hard to win games and it's hard to run offense when you don't have a five man and so for us to be in the game down the stretch um, I, I don't believe in moral victories but you know we were right there it's head coach Tony Skin, who's going to join us on the later segment here on the show. We'll talk about Loyola Chicago. You guys now getting off the road and get three of the next four at home, which I know you're excited about. Absolutely. You guys have played so well at home. But coming up next here on the Coaches Show, we're going to talk to the women's coach, Vanessa Blair-Lewis. They have a huge game coming up on Thursday. It's for first place in the A-10. We'll get her thoughts on what has been a spectacular season so far for the women. We'll do that next right here on the George Mason Basketball Coaches Show. Welcome back to the George Mason Basketball Coaches Show. Tony Skin, the men's coach, will join us in our next segment. Right now, it is my pleasure to be joined by the women's basketball coach, Vanessa Blair-Lewis. We're going to get to her in just a moment, but I want to let everybody know, coming up on Thursday, the women have a huge game, going to be taken on St. Joe's. We're going to talk about that in a minute, but the first 1,000 fans... On Thursday, you show up. It's the pink uh, game for breast cancer awareness coming up on Thursday. First thousand fans, Coach, get the nice little cool pink hat there. So thanks to our sponsor, Sentara, for that. We look forward to uh, everyone coming out on Thursday and joining us for the game. So let's get right to it. Okay. I want to, before we get to St. Joe's, in case people aren't aware, I'm going to run through some numbers, and I want to get your reaction to this, okay? Been around this program, since I was a student in 1989, I've never seen these numbers, okay? 18 and three overall, the best 21 game mark in school history. Nine and one in conference play so far, the best start in A-10 play in school history. Nine and no record at home. 54th in the net rating in the NCAA, the highest it's ever been in February for George Mason. You're number three in bench scoring, ahead of number one South Carolina. You're 29th in scoring defense. You're only giving up 56.6 points a game. You're 25th in scoring margin, just shy of plus 17 a game. Did I miss anything? Did that cover it all, Coach? It doesn't sound like it. Yeah, that sounds about right. How have we gotten here in year three from where things were when you took over this program? Uh, well, you know, the whole slogan of Believe Big is not just a slogan to just be, you know, thrown out in the air. We, we truly believed uh, when I took this job that we could, by year three, do some really good things. The portal absolutely helps, right? Um, it, it allows you to get there quicker. Uh, but we just had very concrete goals of what, we, what our expectations were. And the last time I was here, we spoke about what we did last summer. What we sat down as a coaching staff and said, hey, this is what we need to move into the upper tier of the A-10. Um, and we're doing those things. You know, we wanted to address scoring. We wanted to address our depth, uh, which is showing up, which you're saying, a third in the nation. And we wanted to uh, address passion. And I think when you come out to see us play, you see girls playing with that kind of passion. So... Um, for us, it's, you know, you, you look at those, I hear those, our players hear those, but when they come to practice, 
we just put a hard hat on and we say, hey, it's just the next game. It's just, we don't put the pressure on ourselves. We have to, it's just the next game. And are we meeting or exceeding our goals we've set for ourselves? You talked about the last time you were with us earlier in the season. And you mentioned about the offense. The offense had to get better. And I asked you at the time, would the defense then have to take a step back in order for the offense to be better? And you're like, mm, weren't sure how it was going to all play out. You weren't sure. Well, the numbers say that the defense hasn't taken a step back. Mm -hmm. And you look at the last two, three, four games in league play, yes, you've won those games, but it's been the defense that's kind of been locked in more so than the offense. I mean, you held Loyola Chicago to 13 points in the first half. The other, Not the first quarter, the first half of the game on Sunday. I mean, excuse me, Saturday. Yeah. That's The defense is still there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, we didn't forego it. Uh, we just had to make sure that we were taking a, taking a look at the team holistically, saying, okay, in order for us to be in the top, part of the conference, we, we have to score more than 50 points. So we continue to press defense, and in games like you just alluded to, Fordham and Loyola Chicago, we had a tough time scoring. You know, you're on the road, everything's different. Coach Skin just alluded to it, a little banged up. But teams are really scouting you now. You know, maybe in the first half, first couple of games, they're like, okay, it's Mason. You know, yeah, it's sure. not, you know, Ma but now it's like, okay, they're preparing for us, and we can tell that. We can see when we run a certain play, things that they're taking away, and you have to show your girls. So, um, yeah, the defense has to hold, you know, especially on the road. And we always say our defense has to travel. So when our offense is tough nights, which we've had, you know, our defense has had to show up. All right, let's get to it. Thursday night, 9-1 and one, George Mason in A-10, 10-1 St. Joe's in the A-10. I can't think of a bigger regular season game maybe in program history than this one coming out. But as a player or a coach, these are the games you love to play in, right? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. These are the games we tell our players that they were recruited to play. These, these games like this. But we don't put that pressure on our, on our players. Like, they all know. They came into practice today in the film, and they knew what time it was. You could just feel the, the current. And so for us, they were ready to be prepared. And as a coach, that's all you want. You want them to be ready to be prepared to win a game. And that, that was just the, the embodiment of practice today. They were ready for this moment. It's going to be an interesting kind of styles, contrast, I guess, because they have four players that play 30 minutes a night. They're kind of their core four of their starting five. You guys only have one player playing 30 minutes. You've got seven or eight that are playing at least 15 minutes mm -hmm. or more. So it's going to kind of be, can you wear them down, maybe get them in foul trouble, whatever it is. They have their core four, but you've got your kind of elite eight, if yeah. you will, that are going to go out there and you're just going to shuffle people in and out and find the hot hand. Yeah, and it's good that we've been able to play this amount of people for this reason right here. Now we're into the second half of the conference, and, you know, some of your starters, you know, they need breaks at times because they've been – they've. You know, Sonia Smith has put the team on her back every single night. And they're nice when she, you know, had a tough go of it. And Kennedy Harris shows up and Zaza Walton shows up. And so to have those players with that experience now is really where you want to be in February. And like I told the team, out of a 10, I think we're at a 7. Like there's still so much more room for us to peak and grow. And this is where you want to be heading into conference tournament time. It's pretty amazing that you have – two freshmen that for a while were just kind of going back and forth and winning Rookie of the Week <laughs> yes. every week. It's kind of like, let's become kind of the George Mason of awards. So, I mean, they've stepped in and, and have played very well. Usually it takes freshmen a while. They've been very good. They've been absolutely really good, really good. And then the other night, Taylor, you know, Jamison, who, you know, took a back seat to, to a starting position this year and came in, and we really needed her production, 14-7 and seven for us on the road. We needed that step up. So a veteran coming off the bench as well, you know, with, with the young, young bucks. And this is what we need. And I think that this is what bodes well for us going down the stretch, the depth of our bench. i tell you what else we need. We need everybody to come out to Eagle Bank Arena on Thursday night. Yes. First place on the line, St. Joe's in town. Women's team is 9-1, and one. again, off to the best start in school history at 18-3 and three overall. Coach, I'll be out there. I can't wait All to right. see this one. We're hoping everybody else will come out there as well. Thank you. Good luck Thursday. And, again, a great job all the way around so far this Thank season. Thank you so much. It's head coach Vanessa Blair-Lewis will be back with head coach Tony Skin. It's the George Mason Basketball Coaches Show right here from the Capitol Hill House in Fairfax. Welcome back to the George Mason Basketball Coaches Show. I'm Bill Rowan, along with the head coach of the men's team, Tony Skin. 
Last segment here, we're going to get right into what's coming up for the Patriots. Three of the next four at home starting on Wednesday night as they take on Loyola of Chicago. Seven and two in conference play right now, Coach Skin. Top three team in the conference. Maybe a bit of a surprise. I don't think they were picked that high up, but you know what? Those preseason predictions are never accurate, never correct. It must be nice, though, to get back now. You guys have played a couple games on the road, three of the next four at home starting on Wednesday. Yeah, it's, it's always good to get back to, uh, back to EVA. And we, we've been here before, I believe, when we came off the road from um, playing Richmond and playing GW. We kind of had our backs against the wall, and I think we were coming in two and three, and we responded. Um, and so this is, this is not any different. You know, this is a very well-coached team. Um, you know, Drew Valentine is doing a remarkable job over there at Loyola Chicago. Had a great first year. Um, as a head coach, you know, some ups and downs last year, um, but they're right back in the hunt of um, winning this league. And so it's a respectable uh, opponent. We've just got to bring our A game. How was the response here? And you talked about it before when you had dropped the games to Richmond, GW, even VCU, the three straight games, yeah. and you guys responded really well. And you talked about on the show how well the guys were in practice, that they, it kind of was like, you know, water off a duck's back, no big deal, let's just go out and play the next one. Is that kind of the same feeling? It's got to be frustrating to, to sure. know that they're that close, but are they still going in and working and, and getting the response that you're expecting as we get towards Wednesday's game? Yeah, they, they were, they were um, remarkable today at practice. Um, you know, I think each guy gets it, and they came in collectively, and they kind of came in fuming at practice. So it always makes um, my job easier when those guys are coming in a little bit more self-motivated because they understand what's a task, and you know, hopefully we can put together another good practice tomorrow as well. You look at the A-10 as a whole, and you've got, obviously, Dayton, Richmond there at the top. We've seen Richmond, Dayton's coming up this month. We've seen VCU, Loyola's coming up on Wednesday. When you look around the league at the halfway point, you feel like the A-10 is one of those leagues that deserves more than just that auto bid to the NCAA tournament? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I mean, that, that's one of the reasons I was excited to get the job because I think about the A-10 and the history of the A-10. Um, obviously, for whatever reason, that's been down. But I think that this year um, is showing that we should be a multi-bid league. You know, Richmond is holding it down. Dayton has played well. But we've had several teams that, you know, have been, um, from a metric standpoint, they deserve a conversation. And so um, it's exciting. And I'm just excited that we get a chance to come back home to EBA. You know, our first leg of the season, you know, we had to go on the road um, five times. And we only played at home four times. Um, now that gets flipped the other direction, and we just have to be able to take care of business. And it's nice because some of those at the beginning of the conference schedule, you didn't have the students in town. Obviously, they're back. They were fired up at homecoming. It'd be nice to get a bunch of people out there Wednesday night for the Loyola game. Yeah, no, that's um, that's definitely a must. You know, homecoming, I think homecoming spoiled me a little bit just because the 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 crowd and the atmosphere was phenomenal. Hopefully, we can get that back as well moving forward for the rest of the season, to be honest with you. When you look at the A-10, and you were obviously in um, you know, the Big Ten for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. You were in the Big East, yeah. obviously up at Seton Hall. The A-10 isn't on that level. Mm -hmm. But when you look at the depth from the top to the bottom, it's probably as competitive a league as there is out there in college basketball. Yeah, no, I, and, and I've said this, and people probably think I'm, I'm crazy. You know, again, coaching at the Power Five level for the last you know, five or six years, it's um, – there's not a lot of separation. You, you know, you have your, your Zach Eadies, you know, your seven, five, seven, six guys. Um, but for the most part, you take those guys out. It's a very, very competitive from top to bottom. I don't see a lot of difference. I will say, you know, the one thing that I'm learning about the A-10, it's just a lot easier to manage and win games on the road. Whereas in the Big Ten, it's, you know, first four or five minutes. If you're not in it, man, that atmosphere, it gets you out of control. And next thing you know, you're down 15, down 20 going into halftime. And so um, that's the one thing I am enjoying about the A-10, at least for us thus far. We've been in all of our games on the road, which is always a plus. I'm sure because you're coaching, maybe you don't have the time to necessarily focus on the world of college basketball at large. But it, maybe just timing the way it worked, this weekend you had four matchups with top ten teams over the weekend on the bye week for the NFL before the Super Bowl. Nice to have your sport kind of showcased this weekend with you know Duke, Carolina, Kansas, Houston. All the talk was about college basketball this weekend. Yeah, you know it's it's crazy you said that because I wasn't paying attention. I was I was locked into our guys and our sure. game, and you know I have a thing where I'm not really watching other conferences except for the conference that I'm you know competing in. Uh, maybe I need to get a little bit better at that, but you know I'm locked in on the A10, and you know that's pretty much it. 
I guess I shouldn't ask you who your pick is for the Super Bowl. Then that's probably not a good idea. You know what? I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a football guy, but I am a Lamar Jackson fan. Okay. And so obviously he's not in it anymore. He's not so. in it anymore. So as far as I'm concerned, it's just another Sunday. Your old teammate John Vaughn is 49ers guy. Do you want to help him out, or you rather see him he's, I think he. I think he's a 49ers fan. I think Follerin is a 49ers fan as well. Maybe two guys. Maybe. Two guys that are from Maryland, but somehow they like San Francisco. Of course, right. Makes so no it doesn't sense. make a lot of sense. <laughs> We'll, let, we'll, give him a, we'll give him a pass on that. But All right, so coming up Wednesday, Loyal of Chicago, give me a couple things. I know you haven't done a deep dive on them yet, but for your team, from your own perspective, what do they need to do? What do you guys need to clean up here for this game? Well, they're, they're the fastest team from a tempo standpoint in our conference, and so our, um, our resilience but also our transition defense is going to be tested. Um, they also shoot the three really, really well. Their point guard, the, both their wings are shooting over 40%. Um, and they're taking, you know, some high volume threes and making them. And so, again, our three point defense is going to be tested and we've just got to be able to do a good job of containing both. All right, Coach, thanks again for the time. We always appreciate it. Wednesday night, come on out and see the men's team as they take on Loyola Chicago. Again, the women on Thursday night against St. Joe's. That's for first place in the A-10. So make it a back-to-back -back visit to Eagle Bank Arena this week. We'd appreciate if you guys came out. For Tony Skin, for Vanessa Blair-Lewis, I'm Bill Rowan. This has been the George Mason Basketball Coaches Show from Capitol Alehouse in Fairfax. <laughs>